Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to Imbiosis Webinar Lecture Series 5, 2022. I am Dr. Hamid Bashaira, your moderator for today's webinar. I hope the video that we played just now has provided you with some background of Imbiosis. So, for those who are interested to collaborate with us, you are most welcome to do so. Feel free to browse Imbiosis website and social media for the latest updates and information. I feel so grateful today that all of us are granted good health and time to attend our webinar series. So far, this is our fifth webinar for this year. There will be many more webinars to come, and I hope all of you will join again in the future. Imbiosis webinar series was established and started in 2021 for the purpose to provide a knowledge and research experience sharing platform to ensure we were still connected with each other and stay motivated in our research during the pandemic. And we still continue this webinar because of the support that we obtained from our past webinars. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our honorable speaker for today, Mr. Muhammad Rezwan Shah Zakaria from Nutrition Technology Center Merhat. Allow me to share with you Mr. Rezwan's CV. Mr. Rezwan. Yeah, please. Sorry. Okay. Um, Mr. Rezwan holds a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Chemistry and a Master of Science in Chemistry from University of Putra, Malaysia. He is currently the R&D Major in Biotechnology at Singapore, headquartered multinational biotech firm, Nutrition Technology, and working on upstream and downstream biotech R&D from metabolite engineering to synthetic biology for sustainable protein. He has worked in academic and industrial R&D and commercialization for the last 19 years and specialized in merging research with the market gaps and consumer needs. He joined the industry and got involved in multiple commercial applied R&D ventures, technology transfers, spun off multiple companies from GLCs to the current biotechnological exploration in sustainable protein innovation. He previously served as managing director and head of laboratory of Doho Pajiban Laboratories in Jamberhat or JP Lab. He championed a new venture with a 100-year-old plus Japanese conglomerate, which enters Southeast, Southeast Asian market. He has served on the board of a few companies under J Biotech Group, and he has coordinated and managed the commercialization and spin off R&D division in J Biotech that leads to the formation of JP Lab and two more subsidiaries focusing on biotechnology business for commercial purpose. He has a strong networking with local research institutions and stakeholders, microbial cell factories, synthetic biology and metabolite bioengineering, precision fermentation, and their overall chemical reactions are his highly valued passion. Being active in commercial R&D, technology and innovation has made him actively contribute to professional networking and national higher education. He is also a member of American Chemical Society, Royal Society of Chemistry, and American Association for the Advancement of Science. He actively contributes to academic and now serving as adjunct lecturer in applied chemistry in University Technology Petronas and as industrial advisory panels for UCC, UCHM, and USIM. He has been regularly invited for consultations with authorities and recently by Academy Science Malaysia for the new National Biotechnology Master Plan. Now, let us welcome Mr. Rezwan to share his experience with us. Okay, Mr. Rezwan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the session this uh, in Biosis webinar series. Uh, I thank for your time. I thank for your effort joining them. I can start sharing my slide, right? Yes. 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 Okay.
Okay, everyone. I hope you can clear me. Uh, you can hear me clearly. Uh, if you don't, please let the organizer or the moderator do about this. I will then start uh, this session right now. Uh, I'll be talking about the insects as the driver for the decomposition ecology and the industrial application. Of course, uh, first of all, I will try to introduce, uh, this is the agenda. We'll be talking about the company, of course. I'm representing the company, representing the company. And a bit about myself, we talk about the circular economy, uh, then what decomposition is all about. Then we talk about the waste, biomass waste. We talk about the insects, these tiny little guys who are actually responsible for the decomposition of um, mass, biomass. And then we look on how this uh, little guy contributes to uh, our uh, nutrient circularity. So about myself, about the company, I'm working with the nutrition technologies. Basically, this is a startup, a global startup. First uh, startup in Vietnam, then we move our headquarters to Singapore. We have our facilities in Johor and we are expanding. We just uh, concluded our Series B funding and thus we will be expanding to Selangor. Uh, with a better capacity, larger capacity, uh, inshallah, within this year. So, meaning the task going to be very, very interesting. I need a lot of uh, knowledge. I need a lot of uh, researchers to work with my team. And I need a lot of uh, new uh, research partners, of course. So, basically, in nutrition technologies, what we are doing, basically, we are producing protein from the insects sustainably this is our main product we are producing protein from these tiny little guys for the husbandry and poultry industry basically for the uh, for the uh, uh, agricultural industry so we do it with zero waste uh, uh, philosophy and and the idea is actually to reduce to offer a better price and better quality uh, insect protein or protein to the agricultural industry so about myself, you have time, you can just browse on the LinkedIn if you want to know more about myself or you want to connect with me, uh, you want to do some maybe collaboration, you can just browse LinkedIn, just type in uh, Rizwan Zakra, you will find me there. Uh, then we can talk further about potential research. Just to let you know, uh, recently, uh, just this week, we signed up a deal with Ivoni, uh, one of a big company in animal nutrition. We signed up about uh, to study the, the, the inclusion of amino acids in our black soldier fly. So I will start about, about the insects. But before I talk about the insects, I'll be talking about the circular economy. As you can see, this is the definition by the European Parliamentary Research Service. So in these uh, European countries, they have this kind of uh, research service, parliamentary research service. So this definition provided by them, instead of usually what we do, a linear model, whereby we buy and we throw away. So the concept of circular economy uh, is quite not, not really a singular, but a, a, a plural a, a way of uh, circulating the, the nutrients and the resources. The idea is actually to minimize the waste reuse them, repair, refurbish, recycling. But the big thing is actually repurposing the waste by upgrading them, recycle them, and so on. So although the word circular bioeconomy is not really uh, quite oftenly mentioned by many parties, including research and industry, but I would love to coin the word circular bioeconomy because in this uh, sector, we are talking about uh, reusing the biological waste. That's why I'm using the term circular bioeconomy. Because in European uh, context, they talk about circular economy from mining waste, for example, from oil and gas waste. So they are not just talking about circular bioeconomy. They talk about circular economy in a bigger context. So in our context today, we are talking about circular bioeconomy. 
Well, this is the best part for researchers. As you can see, EU funding, they are very lucrative for the R&D. They, they are very, I would say, uh, uh, the researchers all over the world, especially from Europe, they happy with the funding from the European countries. And as you can see, EU, not just for the uh, R&D funding, they allocate specially 3% of the GDP is allocated for the circular economy. This is very important, I would say, um, uh, 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 progress because uh, it is very important for all the uh, waste and resources from the industry being reused or repurposed back to the uh, society and to the uh, uh, community. And then go next. Okay. If you browse Google, which everyone is now the expert of Google, we are all Googlers anyway. So if you browse what is industrial insects, this is very much what you will guess. The use of insects, their activities and products on industrial scale for human welfare. So this is where my role is all about the company nutrition technologies we are actually playing this role we are producing something using insects for at industrial scale for human welfare and talking about insects they have few roles actually uh, for i mean few roles in economy ecosystem services very much four of them as i mentioned over here by noriga at all pollination Pollination, one of them is bees, you know, you can get honey from bees. They are very good uh, pollinator. So insects play a role in pollination, biological control, of course, food provisioning and recycling organic matter. In our context today, we are talking about recycling organic matter. So just one part of it. So the two charts over here, as you can see, from 2000, uh, I think from 1956 to 2015, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this record, they are recording the numbers of research mentioned in the, in the academic publication about insect research. As you can see in the economic sector uh, ecosystem service, uh, around 11% is being mentioned about insects on nutrient recycling. You know, this is record for almost around 30 to 40 years. And then uh, about the, the type of insect studies, as you can see, they have uh, quite numbers of them. I'm not an entomologist, but these are the, the, the taxonomy group of type of insects being studied by, by the researchers, uh, starting from 2000, uh, 1956 until uh, early of 2020s, 2015, something like that. So in a period around uh, 50 years. And this is the Voronoa uh, chart, as you can see, the Voronoa chart type of biomass. Because I talk about the insects, they are going to degrade, they are going to decompose the organic mass. But where does this organic mass come from? So from the two Voronoas, uh, Voronoas uh, uh, chart, we can see plants are the biggest contributors. In fact, in our factory, we are using only plant bio waste for our production, for our dealing with the insects. We are not using any other type of waste. We are using only plant bio waste because there is too many of them on the market and too many of them on earth. And if you look at this is actually, uh, I, I get this data from the National Biomass Bi uh, Plan 2020. So you can get them as well. So these biomass, most of them are located in the terrestrial surface on Earth, as you can see, a little bit in the marine and dark, a deep subsurface area, but most of them are on the terrestrial uh, location. So we, uh, we can get them very easily. Okay, The logistics play a vital role and they may be crucial as well. And plants contribute a lot contributed then a later on followed by fungi, protease, animals, bacteria and archaea. 
Well, since that we are in Malaysia, let's talk a bit about uh, our type of biomass in Malaysia. So we are very popular, at least Malaysia and Indonesia, we are very popular with oil palm biomass. And we have abundant resources, I would say abundant waste of resources of oil palm biomass in Malaysia, all over the places, Peninsula and Borneo. So this is the record from 2010 to 2020. You see, we have the solid biomass, we have the liquid biomass. So we have quite a lot over here. But for your information, not all of them being utilized, being reused, recycled or repurposed, not all of them, especially liquid waste biomass for me. We have, we have uh, uh, challenges in order to work with them, but we have this little guy, insects, who can work very well with uh, uh, the oil palm biomass. So we are working hard to make sure they are very good for the insects. So we have in Malaysia, the oil palm biomass everywhere scatters all around the peninsula in Malaysia. And here I'm sharing with you the availability of those biomass in the peninsula and Borneo. You see, Klang Valley in plot, Port Klang, you can find a lot of them. You can find um, in Johor as well, the southern part of Malaysia and the eastern part of Malaysia in Kuantan and northern part in Batuas. Quite a strategic location anyway. So in the Borneo, you can find few uh, places uh, in Sabah and just one area in Sarawak over here. So for your information, Nutrition Technologies we, is actually currently in Johor. So I mentioned earlier that we are expanding. We are meaning we are expanding our capacity, our numbers of factory. So you can guess where we are heading after this for our third facility in Malaysia from this, from this uh, uh, region of uh, oil palm biomass. Well, talking about the insect industry may be quite not so, I would say popular, but the industry is booming. The map on your, on your screen, the big map over here, the, the global map of the industry is actually uh, represent the number of entities and companies working actively in the insect industry. There are industry for human, I mean, insect for human consumption and insect for uh, uh, agriculture like fertilizer, uh, husbandry animals and poultry. Ourselves in nutrition technologies, we are working with uh, producing insect protein and oil and also fertilizer for the agriculture, not for human consumption. And in Malaysia, in Southeast Asia, we have multiple numbers of them. I noticed that this map is not very updated, but uh, they are actually, they represent quite an actual, actual scenario, may not be the actual numbers, but there are numbers of actually new uh, companies uh, setting up their facility in Malaysia, working on insect industry. In Singapore, there are plenty more in Indonesia, Thailand, and also in uh, Philippines, Vietnam especially. So the industry is booming, but um, you know, when the industry is booming, we need a lot of support, especially research support, uh, uh, logistic, you know, uh, policy and things like that. So when we talk about the, about the, uh, the role of insect in the industry, you notice that insects uh, decomposition ecology is very important when it comes to forensic science. You know, in forensic, if you go to forensic laboratory, insects, the understanding of insect uh, uh, decomposition ecology of insects is very important and it is a must for forensic uh, analysts to understand that. But we are not looking into that sector, we are looking to the other sector whereby we try to use the skill of these tiny little guys into industrial application, mass industrial application, whereby we try to use what we call black soldier fly. We chose them carefully and then we try to understand and we try to work well with this tiny little guy so that they can eat the industrial waste, the agricultural waste, so that there is seriously, there is a real definition of zero waste in our industry. So uh, I like this uh, picture, actually, this uh, figure whereby it shows what actually happened when the black soldier fly eat those industrial waste. The, the, for example, they are eating uh, uh, agriculture from pineapple industry, from oil palm biomass, you know, from vegetable industry. They will convert those things to lipids, to proteins and fats 
you know, and, and a lot of other very important things. Uh, to entomologists, this is fascinating to them because uh, it is actually seriously fascinating because, I mean, to me as a chemist, I look at this tiny guy, this black soldier fly larvae as a bioreactor. If you work in bioreactor, then you will understand how complicated and how how actually important those machines in pharmaceutical industry, in agriculture industry. But to install, to own, and to operate bioreactor is hugely expensive. But this guy, black soldier fly, the larvae, the guard, is actually the natural bioreactor meant to decompose organic biomass. So meaning to say that I don't have to establish my own bioreactor, which is very expensive, maintenance, purchasing, commissioning, and so on. I just need to farm. I need just I just need to work well with the black soldier fly, the larvae. This guy will will become a bioreactor for me for them to eat those biomass and then convert them into uh, nutritional uh, contents like fats, lipids, protein, and so on. Uh, black soldier fly is a non-pest. For you who are asking about the black soldier fly, they are non-pest and they don't uh, they don't actually provide any uh, they don't produce any pathogenic or or or, or what we call uh, hazardous uh, uh, effect to human or even to plant and animal. This is the pest part. Unlike other pests, unlike other insects, most of them maybe maybe some of them are uh, pathogenic and they are pests type of insects, but black soldier flies are not. And this table actually conclude the type of uh, waste that the black soldier fly can, can process. And as you can see, they can process the monos and then the fruit vegetable waste. They can also process uh, municipal organic waste, solid waste, and some of the milling and breweries waste as well. So in our part, we are produce, we are processing agricultural waste, especially from uh, vegetable and, and industry. These are very much the process of what we are doing over here. We get the waste from the industry. They don't want it. They don't want the, the waste anyway. So we get from them or sometimes we buy at a very cheap price. Then we process them and then the product we will harvest. The main product will be insect protein and then insect oil and the byproduct will be the insect frost something you know usually byproduct is something that you don't want but the best thing in this industry the byproduct from the insect industry is even more useful and and more uh, i would say in future will be more lucrative so this is the process that we are actually working on You can degrade any biomass or any waste by chemical means, physical means, temperature, pressure. You can use catalyst, you can use enzyme, you can use crusher or so whatever uh, type of technology. You can use uh, nuclear technology even to degrade stuff. But we are here to use biological methods, non-harmful methods in order to convert, to degrade, to decompose the biomass into functional ingredients via the, the uh, microbiological me uh, via biological means so that the product is even more useful and the process is even friendly to the environment and we end up with zero waste at all i'm not going to talk about the uh, main product in this industry because main product as you know Usually we will talk about the main product because main product is something that we will sell them. We will get a huge revenue from them. But the industry tend to talk less about their byproduct. But my approach this time is actually I'm going to talk about the byproduct. Why? Because we don't have issues with our main product, which is the uh, insect protein and the insect oil. I'm going to, to talk about the byproduct, which is the frost. We call it as a black soldier fly frost. This is the part we try to guarantee this world, this mother nature, that we are working in this industry with zero waste. The frost, I mean the byproduct, 
in this insect industry, we turn them into something useful. So for us, here is actually the insect manure, uh, the poops of the insect anyway, the uneaten uh, biomass, the uneaten waste, and some of other things like microbes, and maybe uh, we also check for the antimicrobial peptides and so on, minerals. And this is from our own research. Uh, we work on it and we are still working on the frost research. We are very active in protein uh, with uh, frost research and also with the oil research of these insects. But I will focus on the frost research. This is our internal research that we conducted. Uh, this is the publication about the uh, insect frost. So as you can see, from 2012 to 2021, approximately around 10 years, the number of publication about the insect frost increase. So meaning the interest is there. The numbers of funding being poured into this is also increased over time. So the, 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 the what we call the questions even increase from time to time. The industry needs more answers, you know. Uh, the academic is even seeking what, what things to study and what is more inside of us. And this is very fascinating. Take a look at this one. As we are using the insect frost as a biofertilizer. Nowadays, having the war, having uh, some problems in our food supply chain, having the increased uh, price of the raw materials, fertilizer is hit badly. You can read from the newspaper easily. We can see that now the price of the fertilizer is increased in many areas of the world, especially chemical fertilizer. So now we are bringing you, we are bringing this, uh, we are bringing this uh, insect frost as a biofertilizer to the world. The benefit of it as listed here, okay, the top two is nitrogen fixing bacteria, which is very important for the soil and the plant, and phosphate solubilizing bacteria, meaning for the soil and for the plant as well, and plus the other function of the fertilizer. This is very unique to the insect frost, thanks to the microbes, the microbiome is actually encapsulated or they are being there in the insect frost itself. And from our previous trial, we tried with Choi Sum, this one with the collaboration in UTM 2019, we found out that BSF frost improved the total aerobic bacteria count and this is very good for the soil and improved the plant weight and root length. This is good for the farmer's revenues and they also increase the, the performance is also comparable to commercial compost and chemical fertilizer. While you might think that, oh, biofertilizer might be as more expensive compared to the other uh, chemical fertilizer or the more popular compost uh, uh, fertilizer, but insect frost can offer a good price and comparable and some, in some cases way cheaper compared to the chemical fertilizer. So I think uh, insect frost in this as a specific discussion, uh, BSF frost is actually way better, way cheaper uh, uh, for, for the uh, agriculture. We also talk about the function of this byproduct. Again, I'm talking about the byproduct over here. I'm not talking about the main product because main product has uh, plenty full of application. I'm talking about the, uh, the uh, byproduct. They have the potential to be utilized as a biofungicide. Previous slides talking about the frost as a fertilizer, biofertilizer. Now we are talking about the frost can function as a biofungicide. Meaning what? You can buy the fertilizer, you reduce the cost on depending on the chemical fertilizer. Now you can also reduce on pesticide because they can act as a biofungicide. They can kill your fungus, you know, okay they can kill some of the important uh, pathogenic uh, uh, my, uh, pathogenic uh, to the plants. And this is one of the research that we actually recently conducted in vitro. We are trying to, te we tested again the Fusarium osisporum. For you who, who actually do not know what Fusarium osisporum is all about, they are a devastating virulent strains that affect banana and industry, especially potatoes, uh, tomatoes, especially. And for banana industry, uh, Fusarium osisporum or the disease name is banana weeds. 
they have impacted multi-billion, hundreds of million dollar uh, losses to industries, uh, to, to farmers. So we found out that the DSI thrust is a very good for this one. It's very good to inhibit the growth of the virulent streams, as you can see from the graph. You see, we are comparing this uh, uh, our insect frost with other organic fertilizer, and 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 this actually has been proven through the uh, in vitro study. And we are looking forward to expand our studies to in vivo, hopefully with our local partners, our uh, in in Malaysia and also in regional partners, hopefully. And that's conclude my uh, presentation today i welcome a uh, uh, question from the floor from from the online portal facebook and webex over here and over to you the host so thank you very much uh, for sharing us a very interesting topic um not like let me see if there is any question from the other. So, uh, so, okay. uh, there is a question um, from uh, Mr. Go. How nutrition technology is different from other companies? Mm -hmm. Very good question. I like it. Okay. How different we are from other BSF companies? This is very good. This is very good questions. I'm trying to rationalize this to myself and to my team as well. So this is something that I can tell proudly to the industry and to the audience over here. We are building the best R&D team for sustainable protein in this world. I believe for BSF industries, we are heading there. If not, not top 10, we are somewhere in top five or top three. We believe our strength in R&D is very good actually to compete with the other BSF uh, 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 partners, other BSF competitors. So uh, for example, recently we are working with Ivoni one uh, of the big company in uh, animal nutrition we are trying to understand the requirement of the amino acids for for to fortify product protein R&D will be much more better and I can assure you that in the next two or three years we will come up with even better product compared to our competitors. Okay, I hope that's the question. The next question is from Dr. Okay. Um I can tell you that in, in our in our facility uh, not not in the production, but in the R and D. We have chemists. Myself is a chemist. We have entomologists. We have biochemists. We have microbiologists. We have engineers. Uh, we have biologists. You know, so we need all these kind of talents because we cannot concentrate. I mean, we also have biotechnologists. Be you, you can see that the diverse background of fields, you know, I cannot say that you must measuring in, let's say, microbiology or you have to measure in entomology or you have to measure in chemistry. No, 
we need you to be very good in what you are doing especially if you are doing chemistry be very good in the chemistry so that you can understand the bio process in the insect gut if you are doing microbiology i will ask my team in the in, in my team they have uh, numbers of microbiologists i will ask them i mean how microbiology will contribute to the betterment of our r d uh, uh, strategic plan for example if you are engineers i will ask you for, for example maybe can you produce uh, can you design a bioreactor similar to the insect gut you know something cheaper not as expensive as the other bioreactor in the market something like that we try i mean not specific measuring but of course you have to do something in science so that you can understand you can appreciate the knowledge yeah that that would be my my answer another question uh, from that morning can you share it Okay, there is a, a, a one question over here. The efficacy of the fertilizer presented in the controlling disease resurgence. Uh, uh, this is also very important. Our studies right now is limited to the in vitro. So we are expanding our studies into in vivo. So, but we believe through our in vitro studies and the data we collected from our uh, local farmers and our uh, uh, internal trials, we believe we can mitigate the resurgence of uh, the diseases on plant. And there is another question over here talking about the possible candidates in set that capable of similar tasks assigned. Okay, okay yeah uh, you are asking something like can we use another insects if i know me second right well uh, as a chemist i don't mind if my bosses would like to choose any type of insects because i will look from the perspective of chemistry my microbiologists will look from the perspective of micro uh, microbiology and we believe that uh, uh, any type of insects so long as they provide a very good uh, 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 what we call technology for us that we can scale up them at industrial scale, why not? But for now, I would say that we would prefer to focus on the black soldier fly. Why? Because we understand them better compared to the other insects. You know, like other insects, they may have better degradation rate, but we don't understand a lot about them. In order to start something at industrial scales, which we will encounter authorities in Malaysia, Department of Vet, you know. We will also encounter uh, compliance issue with uh, EU. And we also encounter compliance issue in Japan, Singapore, and US. So we need to choose carefully the type of uh, uh, insects that we want to work with. Okay. Um, for the market share about the nutrition technologies, uh, I'm not the right person to answer this one, but I believe we can browse on the internet to, uh, to look into this. They may not give some accurate answers, but you find some data related to it because I'm, I'm involved in the R&D particularly. Okay, great. Okay, this is another one. How do you first step into this field of BSF in nutrient decomposition? Well, to be honest, I don't like insects. I try to avoid insects in my entire life, but here I am, I'm this insect industry. Uh, I don't know how I put myself into this industry, but what I like most about the industry is actually they are so, I would say, clean industrial uh, uh, sector whereby there is a zero waste philosophy that I like. The environment in the company is very motivating. They welcome ideas. They appreciate different backgrounds and they try, they, they, they tend to try and appreciate ideas from every individual. For your information, we have numbers of different nationalities. If I'm not mistaken, maybe up to 14 different nationalities. And we work with different people, different talents, and we try to appreciate and we get different ideas and feedbacks and we embrace every moment we have in the, in the company. 
that is the best thing I think about working in the company. Question from Nor Amanina UPM. Is there any challenges using BSF as the experimental organism? Well, we don't use the BSF as the experimental organism anymore. We already use it in the industry on the ground. So they are not anymore in the experimental stage. We are scaling up. We have millions, millions of those uh, insects in our factories. So yeah, it is not in experimental stage. Okay, from Carlin, may I know the type of microbe your my team is working on? That one will be confidential. I try, I mean, that one will be confidential, Carlin. There's another question about chitin. Well, yes, uh, one of the byproducts in this industry is actually the shell, I mean, the, uh, the, the skin of the insects. The skin of the insect contains a lot of chitins and you need to extract the chitin from the insect's uh, uh, skin. We call it exuvies. Insect skin is called exuvies. So we need to extract the chitin from the exuvies. It's dissimilar like, you know, shrimp, they have the shrimp outer shell. So you can also extract the chitin from the shrimp outer shell. Similar to this insect, you can actually uh extract the chitin but the problem is chitin extraction is not our core technologies we would rather work out work this uh, out with some other partners we are talking with partners in singapore they have a technology to extract the chitin from uh, the outer shell of the shrimp so we are still negotiating and see what we can do about it but yes to answer your question chitin is abundant in this uh, uh, bsf industries we need technologies way cheaper to accept them out yeah i guess i answer all of them let me know if i miss anything okay okay thank you very much uh mr rezwan it seems that lots of questions for you so there are many participants who are very interested in your study. Uh, so I am um, maybe one question from me. I would like to know whether is there any challenges that you face uh, in this? <laughs> yes, <topic>? yes, yes. <laughs> the first challenge that I have is actually I don't like insects. That is the first challenge. OK, but I need to work with them. That is the first thing. So I, I, I'm still managing my fear towards insects. This is the first thing. Second, uh, in industry, for example, in academic research, if you try, if you try to browse BSF, black soldier fly, and you try, what do they prefer to eat? You know, like us. If you ask me, I mean, I have nasi goreng ayam with burgers. I like burgers. You know, these black soldier fly also they have preference. You know, they may like to eat a uh, uh, waste from pineapple industry. You know, they may like to eat something, uh, the waste from, let's say, a soft vegetable industry. But that is not luxury in our country. We have problem in, in order to outsource those waste. What I'm working with is actually with a waste that is highly fibrous. They have a lot of fibrous. The black soldiers fly tend to not so like them. But what my role as a chemistry and my team as a microbiologist, what do we need to them is actually we need to pre-process the bio waste so that we can prepare the healthy and delicious food for the black soldier fly. So that is my role basically. A, a, a very big challenge. We just we need to make sure that the, the black soldier flies love what they eat. And when they love what they eat, they can grow bigger, healthier, happier, you know and we can sell even more. I can <laughs> see there are lots of, I mean, um, uh, advantage from this study. Yeah. Uh, and there is another one question from Idris Abdugani. Uh, do you have any plan to venture into human food from insects? Mm. Well, personally, I would say no, because uh, 
our philosophy is actually to produce the insect protein for the husbandry animals, you know, for cows and shrimp, salmon, and so on. We don't intend you to eat the larvae. I don't eat the larvae. I never tested anyway for your information. And I don't plan to eat the larvae as well. I guess uh, we don't we don't have any plan towards that for human consumption, no. Okay, and another question from uh, Dr. No Khalida. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Razan, for your interesting talk. Have you encountered any fungal infection while rearing the BSF in your industry skill? Mm. Fungal infection. Okay, good question. Very good question. Tricky one. Okay, yes, I think fungal infection is uh, not phenomenal. It is actually preventable. Uh, thanks to the process what we have in our facility, it is a proprietary process we are trying to pattern uh, uh, anyway by this year. We are able to uh, mitigate the, the fungal infection. Mostly the fungal infection does not come the BSF, but they come from the waste itself. So that's why I said just now we have the process to treat the waste so that they can eat better by the BSF. So we do have a process to mitigate the fungal infection. They are not serious, they are very minor and manageable. And the next question is from Lee Chun Wai. Uh, my, the question is, will there be any insects worth to experiment on in the future? Yes, uh, for Lee Chun Wai, I will, I, my answer would be yes. Certainly there will be other type of insects that worth to be, stu that worth to be studied. But first, we need to study. What are those new candidates of insect that is potentially to be explored? Of course, I mean, last time when we see in movies, those who study uh, insects, for example, they, call, they are called entomologists, may not be the interest of the industry. But right now, we have a perspective. We have a new understanding that we need new insects, like you, you're asking, you know. But what are those insects? We don't know. As a chemist, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. We need entomolo entomologists and, and, and maybe biologists to tell us now, you know, hey, I have a new candidate. You know, I have a new studies. I understand the gut process and, and, and everything. Then at the industrial scale, then we can try on. I believe there will be a new insect candidate in the future. And another question from Sarvini. Which insects do you find easy to work and which one you will say is complicated to study? <laughs> I only work with one insect, which is black soldier fly, uh, right now. So I don't have any relevant answers to this. Only one uh, insect I'm working with. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rizwan. I guess there's no more question from the participants. And so we, okay. So we have come to the end of the webinar. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Rezwan for the very interesting research topic. And I am sure that has opened up our view and give you an idea on how uh, that you want to bring up your research uh, output to the next level. So today's webinar has recorded uh, 90, 91 participants from Webex, 60 participants from Facebook, and the total participants are 151. So. Uh, and I also would like to thank all participants for spending your time with us today. And uh, before we say goodbye, let us immortalize this session by switching.